Hey, 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 everybody. What's up? What's up? What's up? Smash that like button. How you doing? Welcome. Uh, better not have the series catalog out. That's funny. Sorry about this, everybody. I thought I scheduled this for 1130. I was doing some stuff. But hey, I'm here now. Um, thanks for, you know, being around. Hey, Karma's Cafe. One Small Moose. Nola Boo. Deb W. What's up? What's up? What's up? We got Mary. We got Jack T, a fish by another name. We have, hey, Mary again. What's up, Lindsay? Pause and pose, and everybody else just listening. Let's get into Pete's. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna do this, but um, I mean, he he said a, a few things in here, so we'll just go over it and see what happens. We're gonna look through Pete's comic book collection. And y'all are here for it, so why not? So let me share my screen. Let's get into it. Let's see how much we can actually bear. Uh, let's go. Hey, Tina. Belize and Mimi, what's up? Florida, how you doing? Pause and pose. How you doing? What is up? Hey, Kira. Yeah, this is the one I heard he um, abuses BBJ, but there's always abuse from him when it comes to BBJ on multiple times. I'm here for the new Mutants Mint. Okay. 
Hey, D-Rob, what's up? Hey, maybe. Hey, Anunnaki. BBW Homer. Uh, hey, a Yeti. Hey, Keelan. Hey, Elise. Uh, how are the kitties? Where are the kitties? <clears throat> hey, Megan. Emily. I'm just going to look for the cats real quick. <clears throat> Show the cats off first. Hey, Leo Queen. Hey, Charlotte. Oh. Hey, Gail. Hey, Happy Sky. Hey, Angel. There's, uh, All right. There's, there's one. Hey, boy. There's one cat. Hey, Ronnie. And the place is hey, hey, boy. Hey, Nina. Hey, where Casey is. What's up? Hello. Hey, Polly. Yeah. Oh, I can guess where Casey might be. What's up, Cor? How are you doing? Hey, Rainbow Road. Hey, Way Bowen. See your eyes there. When she looks up, you can just see her eyes. How cute. Hey, Lambo. This is the whole trinity. Aw. All, All right, right, Sammy boy. There is zero cleaning up going on in that house. They have all the time in the world to clean, but never want to oh, use Sammy it. Boy! Is Sammy that... Boy! Is he in the same shirt from the day before? What are we doing tonight? I was going to look at some... Uh, going to go through my comics. Hey, Kokomi. Hi, I rib. It's in the title. Yep. So, made myself uh, burgers for supper. Just fried up a couple of burgers. Uh-huh. So I ate. Sam, if you want more attention, you're going to have to come up here. Sorry, Sam. You're going to have to follow me. Hey, Nine Fit Ninja Cat. Hey, MJ. Okay, your glass, wine glass, it's comic book night. Today's your Friday. Well, happy Friday. Yeah, you'll probably need to be drinking if uh, if I'm going to be talking about comic books. So, up on hey, me, girl. Uh, worn eyeliner? No, never worn eyeliner. Uh, Magic Gathering? Never had any interest in Magic, Magic the Gathering. Hey, hi. Hey, Rebecca. Uh, I had myself some... Uh, I fried myself a couple burgers. So I had burgers for supper. Welcome, everybody. That's just coming in. Smash that like button. So I just, nah, I didn't have anything on the side. Didn't feel like I didn't feel like putting in the effort to fry up uh, to make some fries or anything. Can't figure me out. I don't know what there is to figure out. Do we eat salad? Not not generally. No. Hey, Seal. Had McDonald's like the healthy queen I am. Angel. Chantel mentioned that she uh, had McDonald's recently. Hey, Anna Ripsa. Is it the, the biggest McDonald's in the Middle East or something like that? Hey, Hanks there. What's up? Welcome. Hey, Natalie B. I think she said hey, that the, the McArabia, I think she said she had. Hey, Triggers. Have we gotten veggies in my tummy recently? Yeah, a little bit. Hey, Charles. 
No, I didn't watch it. She uh, she texted me uh, today about it. Uh, Panzer und Girl? No. Yeah, the Mick Arabia. Uh, I assume that's ham and bacon. Why would there be bacon? Really, why? I think he should lose members over his racist talk. Well, he should. Yeah, I think Chantel and I should probably come up with uh, some sort of... Uh... And he's handling off uh, BBJ. He should. Oh, what's the word? You think some he know better? Agreement, uh, some sort of like... Uh... You think he know better about the bacon, right? Custody agreement. We need it. We need a custody agreement. Chantel and I need a custody agreement on... Uh, hey there, Soma. On the Trinity. Denny's or IHOP. I've never had either. I don't know. I've never eaten at either of those. Shared custody, yet. Yeah. Uh, what's authentic again in Canada that you can't get anywhere else? Uh, I mean, there's a few things. Um, beaver tails. Uh, puts in. Actual puts in. Hey, Charles. I said, I said hi, Charles. Um, a Caesar. Uniquely Canadian. He knows better. Uh, geez, girls are squeaky. They can be, yeah. Do we really beaver? Not normally. Just their tails. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Who's hey, MG. What else? Uh, Canadian Smarties, which are like M and M's. Um, Jack Gates have... says, "If the Trinity has any morals, they won't go back to her." I don't know about that. They do all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, his viewers probably other, didn't get I get it. A few other, uh, few other Canadian sex uh, ketchup chips. Apparently, are not something that you can really get in the U.S. for the most part, and uh, all dress chips apparently as well. Did he really say Somebody that? Was saying the other night, the BBJ fell Are down the British? steps. Are you serious? Hey, Conbrecka, uh, native Canadian food. Uh, I've never had any First Nations food myself. I'm not sure what sort of uh, recipes they've got. got set up. Yeah, I ordered. Some, I ordered some groceries, and I decided to get myself an orange crush. That's Canadian stuff. Oh, yeah, there's uh, there's there's specific types of crush, specific flavors of crush that you apparently don't get in the U.S. We have everything chips in the U.S. Hey, fun. Hey, and Selena, what's up? Is clear. The snark triad. Right. So I'm just dying. This is more real, Crush or Fanta? I've, I don't know that I've ever had Fanta. I really like Crush. Really like uh, Crush. That uh, all my views on French Canadian independence. Really what views beyond man, why not? I mean, why not is sort of where it, uh, like, most of my viewers in the US, yes, 60-odd uh, percent. Was it 69 percent, I think, or 66 percent? But 60-something percent of my viewers are American. Hey, Life of Lindsay, Bannock? what's up? Uh, no idea. Very true to Rob. The way I like any flavor crush is when it's half frozen. Um, what percentage from me? Uh, I want to say like eight, eight percent. Uh, oh, uh, another thing that you can only get in Canada is uh, a para. A what? What do you say? Uh, no, you're not blocked, Holly. 
Eggnog. I like eggnog, but it's expensive. A para, Amy. A para these nuts. Yeah. Yeah, Rebecca got it. Rebecca okay. got it. Thoughts on Ted Cruz's daughter trying sewer slide. Came at his bio last year and parents not supportive. Yeah, fuck uh fuck Ted Cruz. A para. Hey Sarah J. A para D's nuts. <laughs> yeah. Bought some eggnog oh, today. Real funny, real funny. Pete's so funny. Come here, ugly. Ted Cruz is a shapeshifter. And every shape is gross. Charlotte, sometimes welcome. All right, so we're in the room. Toilet paper in the background is Royale. McDonald's or Arby's? Uh, I prefer McDonald's. I've never and had four Arby's rolls McDonald's. right by the bed. <laughs> Not so conspicuous. <laughs> so let's go through these comic books. Welcome, Charlotte, sometimes. Oh, thank you, Mary. Hey, Pharisee, what's up? Jeez, can you hear her purring? Hear my stuff? My comics, yeah. Um, I had my therapy today. It's actually been... Uh, so I had my therapy today, and uh, like it's a uh, video chat thing. And when it came up, she was already on my lap. Yep, I got the dark so, blue today. Right off the bat, like very first thing that I talked to uh, my uh, therapist about today was the cats. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate yeah, it. I've seen the video of a bugger falling out of Taker's mouth onto his lip and then eating it. I highly recommend it. I'll pass. Talk about my feelings, yeah. She is purring so loud right now. Hey, Shara, what's up? Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Nola Boo. Appreciate it. <laughs> Wait a second, did I miss something? He, he was doing what? Oh, man. Hey, Jesse. Watch when he leans back. Hey, kill face. Do, 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 do. Look at her dancing now. Oh, she's dancing. Look at her dancing. Oh, look he at did her look. dancing. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, do I use my phone to go live? Uh, when I'm not sitting yeah, at the computer, yes. Maybe she's got a poopy stuck. Still burning. Oh boy! Like that's the thing about her. Like do whatever I want to her. She just well, that's the problem. He does whatever he wants to her. That's not nice. He wouldn't like somebody doing whatever they want to him, now would he? Probably not, right? <laughs> and she just comes right back to me. Shaken geriatric cat baby syndrome. Yeah, it's like people tell him, like, imagine, leave the cat alone. Year old elderly woman. So, no, she doesn't scratch. She doesn't really scratch. No, she's she will let you do anything you want to her. Well, that doesn't mean you should, Pete. She's a masochist. I can't, like I've said this before. She's a she's an absolute masochist. She will let you do goddamn anything. Hey, Harley. Fine, but you're happy to. Okay. Right. He likes to grab her head and squeeze. Yeah, he does really nasty things. Hey, Sapphire. Why are you putting the cat upside down? She's still purring. Seriously? <laughs> and she's not leaving. That's what you're doing with. She's got, yeah, she's got like, 
wet food twice a day and then dry food for whenever she just needs to top up. See, so yeah, I give her wet food twice a day. Thanks, Mo. Where right, Lindsay? Poor kitty cat. Because if he's comfortable doing this on camera, what is he doing off camera? I'm really worried about BBJ. He's playing cheeseburger. A lot of cats live up to 25 years old or more. Yeah, she's got a, I think she's got a couple more years left in her. Right. Uh, exactly. Mary Beth. I know. I need to. We're just study. Exactly. Uh, yeah, he's fish. downstairs. I think he's still downstairs. I haven't given them their. Uh, I just realized I haven't given them their treats yet. Also, shit! I just realized I meant to order more treats in the uh, groceries. Hey, Marie. What's up? How you doing? Hey, Beaker. She'll lose her lunch being flipped like that. Mm hmm. Well, he doesn't care. Now he's saying that uh, she has a couple more years left in her. What happened to the talk that him and Chantel were saying about her that she could pass away at any time? Now, now it's okay, though. Casey, I've uh, almost run out. Oh, hi, Sam. Yeah, I totally forgot tambourine might be for me. Where are coming? Good morning, Edna. I figured. Uh, What's MG. up? Welcome. Yeah, completely forgot to get uh, more temptations. Um, I'll be going. I'll be. Hey, Perry Blug. I'll probably be uh, summoned your cat too. You're welcome, Ariel. Uh, I do want to hit up. Uh, I do. We'll probably walk down to the grocery store in the next day or two to pick up meat. Um, uh, Casey, eat your treats. Eat your treats. No worries. No worries, I know. He pretends to burst them on cam. They will. They will get. She. You think so, Don? She will get angry. Getting a new kitten? Probably not a kit. Casey, do you not even want your treats? Weird. I put treats out for her and she's not even eating them. Well, did you put food what? out? Have you has he given them food? Uh I cooked today, Kate. Show the tub now. Have you noticed he always gives out the treats and we don't see him actively giving out any type of real food? It's always treats every single time. She has treats and she's not eating them. Tommy Dibu, you may not know your best friend. Anyone could want. Uh, you may not know you're the best friend. Anyone could want. Did she put her? Yeah. Oh yeah, she ate earlier for sure. To Rob, um, want to tell us not treats? I guess so. That's weird. She usually, usually she is an absolute whore for treats. It's so weird that uh, she's sort of not in the mood right now. Exactly, Journey. He had her dangling. That's very yeah, uncomfortable. Okay. Might not want to eat. A lot of things are going on. Uh oh. <laughs> Got cats on both sides now. I'm surrounded by cats. And he's purring loud. And there goes Sam. 
Ooh, yes, good scratches. Oh, you like the good scratch. Hey, Miss Hellraiser. You like the good up? scratch. You like the good scratch. Am I feeling? I think she's feeling fine. I think I don't know. She might just not be hungry right now. And that floor definitely was not vacuumed, even though he said he did. A bit leaner. When was that Tuesday? Uh, I don't know. You said he vacuumed. Whatever that means to him. Hey, black girl. She probably does miss getting kisses. Ring light or tripod? Yeah, I've got a ring light. That's a ring light up there. You have a clear cat vice. And I don't even try to hide it. Sam is my favorite. Welcome, Fatal. Exactly, Jay Herod. How can you know not know that cats can miss their humans? Well, yeah, like I shook the bag to get Sam to like I shook the bag specifically so that Sam would come to get uh, some treats of his own. I don't like kissing cats. And look, he got his own boxes on the ground. Holy crap, talk about can you take your boxes out, mister? Key lime pie, please buy some treats for the pussycats. I will. I'll get some, uh, like I said, I'll probably try to hit the store tomorrow just to get the, just to get enough meat to last me until payday. MG? Yeah. Yeah, if she stops eating, if she stops eating entirely, then yeah, I'll definitely, uh. Yeah, that room is gross. I really want to see the washroom. Hey, that would be something. Uh, probably not going to bother with any vegetables. Uh, carpet is filthy. Yeah. Here's the bad thing. I gave it a vacuum a couple, few, couple days ago. Just the vacuum needs uh, uh, needs to be cleaned up a bit too. Hey, bacon. The vacuum needs to be cleaned up? Okay. I mean... The sheets look nasty. Yeah. So in other words, the vacuum, they didn't take what's out of, you know, the trap. All right. Right. Hey, chef. May as well start in on doing? showing off the comments. Kate K for the kitties. Thank you very much, Kate K. So, may as well start with uh, by showing off the comics I'm not keeping. Excuse me, Casey. So, yeah. Going to start off by showing uh, comics that I will not be keeping. All right, let's see these. I'm curious to what uh, he see. thinks are a waste. Fearless. Oh, is that Miss... Yeah, so is this the... Uh... Is that Captain Marvel? Yeah, so this was like a uh, okay. sort of an anthology comic. So there's one story that ran throughout the uh, whole Helen Smith run of it, and then a couple backup stories. So he won't keep that. Okay, gotcha. Had Storm being unable to stop herself from being dramatic. So that's gone. Yeah. Give me a second, just to. Put this in a better position. Send them to Monty. Yeah. <laughs> Fearless. I mean, I'm not a comic book guy. And like, it was like specifically like, uh, you know, comics focused on some of their female characters. Millie the Model. One of their classic characters. So yeah, they did a Millie the Model story. You know what would be nice if maybe, um, maybe him and Chantal can both sign all these comics and then give them to somebody. That would be nice. Uh, that one was Leia Thompson, I believe. It could be worth something. Or Leia time. Williams, I mean. I think that one was Leia Williams, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Do comic stores buy used? Yeah. As long as they're in good order. And then... But it depends on the comics, though. Yeah, and then there was a uh, 
very brief, very small, short Kelly Thompson backup that featured this epic panel. But he probably has looked it up uh, as to if how much they're worth. It's probably a few cents. The Marvel Babies! He had a new Mutants This one featured a lot of, like, uh... Okay, so what happened to your cousin? Did he sell all his comic books? He's got, like, baby Kate Bishop and baby Laura, Laura Vereen. Baby Hazmat. Yeah, each issue had three stories. One was a continuing story by uh, Sean and McGuire and Claire Rowe, and then it had two backup stories by... Uh... Oh, that's a good idea, Flady. Yeah, Children's Hospital might enjoy them as a donation, but the f- uh, the filth they come from, right. But that's actually a pretty good idea. Donate to a place that would appreciate these comic books. Yeah, there's that one. There was the... Uh... Because it did pay a few dollars for each of them. Can you imagine having... There was this... the Teeny Howard Keizama, or Teeny Howard Keizama Death's Head. Okay, how, what's the average price for a comic book? And then you multiply that by maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Like, multiply that by like, I don't know, like 120 in a box. That is a lot of comic books. which uh, prominently featured, yeah, all these up. Also prominently featured uh, a bit of an homage cover there, I think. Prominently featured Wicked and uh, Hulkling. Maybe three or four bucks. The... uh... Marie says, 15 years ago, my brother-in-law sold his collection for 4000 Okay. He keeps nothing in sleeves. Yeah, I was about to say that. Like, usually you, you're, they're sleeved. They're wrapped in plastic. You know, they're taking really good care of him. He just puts it in, you know, unsleeved and just puts it in boxes. Probably some of them got wet. And, you know, depending on the temperature and other things, they could start sticking together. Lots of things. Jim Zoe, Sean Isaac's Champions, which was actually a really good run. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about your cousin, a fish. My condolences. Can't I sell them? I mean, not for much. Yeah. Right, let me sit down again. Uh, Ice Spice. I don't even know who the hell Ice Spice is. You mean Ice Spice? Yeah, I actually really like the, uh, that the James uh, Sean Isaacs uh, run on X Men or on Champions. I mean, they did uh, they did good work. Versus Alpha Flight, Puck. Nobody cares, and Puck sucks. And look, it's superhero Geico. No sticky comic books. Puck is one of the best characters. Champions. Uh, so Puck sucks. Like Avengers. Okay. Kinda. So the original Champions came out back in the seventies. Hey, pretty eyes. What's up? Seventies, I think. Yeah, the original Champions came out in the seventies, and it was Black Widow, Hercules. Ghost Rider, Iceman, and Angel. And, uh, yeah, this one was uh, just like a bunch of young heroes uh, getting together. So, yeah, this, uh, the concept behind Champions was as a bunch of the sort of younger heroes um, gathering together to, to fight crime together. The master of the world. Right. This is how you know that Jim Zub is a Canadian writer. My most valuable comic. Probably Marvel graphic novel number four. I'll get to that a bit. Yeah. This is how you know that Jim Zub is Canadian. Master of the world. He was an Alpha Flight villain. 
Marvel graphic novel yeah. four. Okay, how much is it? Oh, it's the new mutants. It's worth forty dollars on Amazon, but on eBay, somebody's selling it for two eighty nine ninety nine used. Okay, yeah, more wow. champion shit. Whatever. I'm loving this. I am not. Yes. The uh, e viewing Kevin Re- Lebronda Luciano Vecchio, Luciano Vecchio uh, Ironheart series. Does he a- does he say a and you betcha? No, he should, but he doesn't. You're welcome, a fish. This was a good run. Um, e viewing did a really good job on Ironheart. Uh, I have no idea what that comic book is. One thing I liked about her run. Man, where are his gloves? You think he'd take better care, but these are the ones he's not keeping. Yeah. Silhouette. Lindsay says these are garbage. One of the uh, original, or one of the classic uh, new warriors from way back in the 90s. Really cool character. She's uh, tragically underused, frankly. Um, like, Silhouette is such uh, my oldest comic. Uh, I think Marvel graphic novel number four. What amazing condition. I mean, they're not that old, and they were just shoved in a box so, and not ride very often. Is he going to? Nah. Maybe. Yeah, Silhouette is a really cool character. Uh, she is handicapped. She needs crutches to get around, but she's still a superhero. Wait a second. So Marvel graphic, uh, is it novel four was, you know, originally published when December 4th, 1981 is what go collect is saying. Holy crap. Yes. That's the Kelly Thompson, ago. Leonardo Romero, Hawkeye run. That one was uh, iconic. Probably happy he's not talking about Elon. I guess so. Certain things are more reactable than others. Let me just put it that way. So all this, all these types of comic books, uh, I have no interest in. And there's so many people collecting comic books these days that you know. For you to get what people were getting for comic books back in the day, it's so difficult. It's so hard. Yeah. Romero and uh, Thompson and Romero did a lot of like this sort of panel where it shows uh, Kate sort of across multiple across multiple panels type of deal. They also like doing these where she's like sort of seeing things. Um, that's one of my favorite of those panels. Can you imagine the amount of monies went into him traveling to the comic book store and picking these up every week? And then having Sorry, to. I just wanted to see, find some like my favorite of the. Uh, but I guess if panels. he's. Uh... Nah, I don't think that one has some of my favorites. Where do you like it? Uh, I mean, I used to get them from just like a comic shop. Hey, Neri. What is that on the bed? It does look really crappy that's on the bed, but it's actually cat treats for BBJ. And she never ate them because she was being hung upside down for a while. They're still on the bed, though. Comic ever made me cry? Oh, absolutely. Uh, let's see. This one have... Nah, I don't think this is the one. I'm trying to find one of the ones that has, like... Yeah. yeah, that one had a lot of, like... Kelly Thompson's really good at uh, at giving her artists fun fight scenes. So yeah, the Thompson Romero uh, Hawkeye was really good. Let 
you collect vintage radios, can't file them in a box like this. Oh. And then, of course, it uh, went into West Coast Avengers with Stefano Caselli. That one was really fun, really fun uh, series. Am I even reading chat? Less than I probably should. But the page six, none of these comics have page six, page six and nine. Comic and maybe, oh, yeah, but yeah, plenty of comics that made me cry. Wow, okay, your nephew does well, says Lindsay, selling comic books, but he has most signed by Stan Lee and are pristine. Wow, that's pretty cool. What do I think the excellent smell like? Uh, varies. Um, Wolverine smells like cigars, whiskey, and uh, cigars wi- or cigarettes, whiskey, and um, and sweat. Not pre recorded now. Oh, nice. Wolverine hasn't smoked in years. He still smells like cigarettes. I guarantee it. Um, but yeah, mostly mostly beer and sweat. Uh, beer and sweat. Beast probably smells really nice. Because he's got like a pheromone type of thing going on. Hey, bro. Uh, so yeah. West Coast Avengers, that was a really good uh, comic. You think she didn't like the B.O. smell? Maybe. All new Wolverine. The uh, Tom, the Taylor Lopez run on uh, all new Wolverine, or Tom Taylor in particular. You collect old piggy banks at Dot? First four issues I actually read through, uh, like, got digital codes from people. Uh, so the first four issues of All New Wolverine, I didn't actually end up uh, getting physically. So I've got a bunch of sort of incomplete runs. Oh, yes, this is comic, this issue. Okay. This issue was incredible. But yet he's giving it away. Why? <laughs> Hey, thanks for joining here. I appreciate it. <laughs> I just love that. Now, hopefully you finish the crochet stuff. And why not? And that's his, and that's uh, Laura's sister, Gabby, there. Talking about Dressing up up in uh, fine clothes and giving him a city to to rampage through. Yeah, this is just like a super fun comic. Oh, you used to collect old amber glassware. Okay, nice. Super fun issue. Wolverine and Squirrel Girl teaming up. I wonder what small and you can collect a lot of that would be worth something in a while. Uh, how does baseball cards do these days? Or is there just too much people collecting baseball cards? Uh, Marvel is lost in the sauce. Mm-hmm. Love this cover for the all new Wolverine annual. You collect Hello Kitty things? Aw, I remember Hello Kitty. Yeah, All New Wolverine was just a fantastic uh, comic in general. Like, well, just a, you, genuinely a great series. Um, oh, shit, yes. This issue as well. This list better come to time. Yeah, it's a really good design. Really good costume design. Daniel Kibble Smith. Have I read any of this stuff? Uh, sweetie Sweaty Punches, or Sweet Sweaty Punches. Just have a couple extra dollars I wanted to share. Thank you very much, Sweet Sweaty Punches. Peaches. Peaches. Sweet Sweaty Peaches. You think pennies and stamps? Okay, yeah, I think that might work. Pennies and stamps. Uh, 
lots of people with like huge stamp collections in the tens of thousands of stamps. Collect yeah, NFTs. So. Oh yeah. boy, NFTs. I mean, NFTs aren't doing so well these days. Abby and De- Abby and Deadpool team up to fight zombie animals. Hippity hop here, doom. I don't get that. Hey, Vanessa. Like, this is just such a great. Yeah, I remember Tamagotchi. Uh, when Deadpool is in the comic, you know, it's not necessarily. I, I've read some bad comments. Deadpool's been in some bad comments, frankly. But yeah, this one was just them just having absolute an absolute blast. Yeah. Zombie sloth. You're so into the stream. I am. You want something from the vending machine? Vengeance. It's they have not... soda. <laughs> it's just. I am completely not into this stream. Yeah, he's the only one excited. <laughs> yeah. This issue was uh, ridiculous and one of my absolute favorite uh, issues. Uh, Tabaki Cabal X23. Very disappointed that they uh, had to go back to X23 for a little while. Glad that she's back to Wolverine in the... Uh... At least it's fairly organized. Excellent comments at the moment. Are people watching? People are watching him last night. He had a good amount of people. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. This was a really good series. Skid marks in your underwear? No. Probably. Like when you drop truth bombs? Yeah, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur was really good. Love Natasha Busta's uh, art, for one thing. Um... Let's see. And it's like you like to collect money. Well, that's something. What? I wish I could, but it's Disney. Hey, Jackie uh, Sophie King. Do you collect NFTs of fish by any other name? This is one of his best streams yet, in your opinion. Are you a comic book person, Hankster? Yeah, I just I really like uh Busto's art. She's really good. Also when she draws a uh, devil dinosaur being angry and with flames coming out of his eyes. True Neri. Um it seems Chantel is jealous of Pete's. Every once in a while. And she does things in a passive aggressive way towards him. Remember, she used to always talk shit to Nadir about him. She probably talked shit to Salah about him. He just doesn't know. So yeah, that was just like a really fun sort of all ages comic. Like this is just like a super fun all ages uh, comic. Uh, the cartoon will be really good. The cartoon's going to be fantastic. I know it. I want a dinosaur sidekick. Everybody wants a dinosaur sidekick. Oh, I see. So you make NFTs. Okay. Really nice covers. Who did the, I think it was uh, Amy Reader did the covers. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Amy Reader. Amy Reader does, has, is a really good artist. She does really good cover work, uh, covers for this series. I mean, yeah, yeah, whenever it looks like his eyes are flaming... So cool. So yeah, like I said, just a, like a really super fun uh, comic. I like the artwork. Yeah, Natasha, Natasha Bustos. Natasha Bustos. And Tamara Bonvillain as on the uh, on colors. Like Bonvillain is uh, like one of the best uh, color artists in the industry as far as I'm concerned. 
Marie says I'll never forget when she called Pete's her ball and chain. She did. I remember that as well. Also, one thing I will say about the Moon Girl and Devils the Dinosaur series. Um, I see Hangster. Zoe and Eduardo are the absolute best supporting characters ever. Good art on that one. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are two main, uh, t- two of the major supporting characters were uh, classmates of hers by the name of. Uh... All right. Yeah, this one was fun. I had the uh, different. Uh... Uh... Hey, purple glitter had a pair of uh, supporting characters couple of uh, her classmates, uh, Eduardo and Zoe. Eduardo was just chaos personified and just loved to... Uh, and yet Galactus, this was uh, during a period where he was a uh, life bringer instead of devourer of worlds. So that was kind of a... Uh... Sup, Swan Small Moose, we are not Angling even... With- Kingpin of all the characters. We're not even halfway there yet. Right. And sleep, fucking sleepwalker of all characters to show up. Like man, I wonder what goddamn sleepwalker. I don't have any of them fictive sheets. Right. I wonder what Sella calls her. I wonder what he truly thinks about her. None of them are valuable. Uh, we can kind of figure it out. Like, there is no sense of romance there, especially when he calls her honey. It's so, it's so, it has such like a sarcastic tone to it. Extina. Like, none of these comics are actually worth anything. Yeah. 47 issues. And it just shy of uh, three of uh, 50. Yep, Karma Cafe. Uh, I mean, I bought them at uh, comic shops. Uh, where did she get a dinosaur? I'm asking for a friend. Uh, from another world. He was uh, teleported from another world by accident. And there you go. He bought them from comic shops. Like I'm telling you, he spent money to get there. I remember when Chantel used to drive him to the comic book store. I'm like, it takes time and money to go there and then it takes money to buy the comic book then time and money again boom to go back home so he's spent quite a bit on all these comic books yeah, fuck off Darth I would say uh, yeah, Marvel Rising which was yeah it was cute yeah this one was just like a bunch of uh, sort of younger again sort of younger characters yeah, he knows they're not together. worth anything. I got the first couple issues of Man Eaters, and then I uh, abandoned it because Chelsea Kane is kind of an asshole. See, this is what Peace does with his time. He like researches the crap out of like comic books, like the artists. Uh so many, so many things yes, he does. Um, I did read My Little Pony comics. <laughs> yes, I did used to read the My Little Pony comics when they were still coming out uh-huh. for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Man Eaters covers was nice. Can you fix that comic that's like warped? No, whatever. Crap. Whatever, Anark. This all right. one might be... Yeah, this, this box is all old comics. Oh, yeah, they released comics for a long time. Wow. Yeah, so this is old comics. So these are Mm -hmm. not in great shape anymore. They're not, because you Uh, didn't keep them in great shape. So it's also just like a a lot of like kind of random issues. Yeah, not even like full runs, just sort of like random issues here and there. The secret of Gaunt. Who cares? Fucking Venom. (laughs) Yeah, like that is literally the only comic 
um, series he did not show was the My Little Pony. Why, Pete? Why were the My Little Pony at the back? And why did he not open any of them? Food for thought, everybody. Food for thought. These are all uh, 90s. The new Warriors. Man, Night Thrasher, when he got his own uh, miniseries. Crunchy Pony Mags <laughs> stuck together, the pages. Yeah, got a couple issues of Excalibur. Because <laughs> they won't open. Excalibur was a good comic. Mm hmm. But again, it's just like a few isolated issues. So, yeah, a couple issues of uh, in Excalibur's Inferno tie in. A couple issues of their cross time ca caper. So, again, it's just sort of like random issues of Excalibur. Yeah, but still, could have kept him in Couple wait. random issues of Alpha Flight. Shit, I didn't even know I had this issue. This is not a good issue. Like, this issue is actually, like, genuinely not. Well, actually, I don't remember this issue. Edmonton Blevins. Oh, right. This was the issue right after Doug died. He does have a shelf. Yeah. With My Little Pony um, figurines. He did show them not last night because this was last night, but the night before. He did show them off. I wonder what made his comic book pages get yellow so fast. Not the uh, the absolute destroy your fucking heart issue with uh, the pony shelf is the cleanest place in the entire villa. Exactly. There's also Kleenex on the shelf. I keep bringing that up because I do like Brett Levin's art. Without I like using Brett Kleenex. Levin. Jenna, thank you for sharing your comic collection with us. Yeah. He buys more junk than anyone I've ever seen. Yeah. Comic books. Well, you could describe comic books. Well, I don't know. Some people, he finds pleasure out of reading them. But then he collects them. They could be in way better condition. And then he also uh, wastes his money on junk food. So he's got junk comics, junk food. I have the first... I have the issue that introduced Cable. I actually have the debut of Cable. Holy shit. There you go. How much is that worth? Junk I'll be pony honest. figurines. I like Thumbelina. Mm -hmm. Did he sell some of his comic books? Give me a point? second. I want to see how much New Mutants 87 is worth. I think so. Because that's fucking wild that I've got that. All right, let's check. Because I haven't looked at that box in forever. New Mutants 87. How much is it worth? Uh, New Mutants 87. What it's from you? 1990. 125 bucks. It says... So he could have given me that box of comics with New Mutants 87 in there, and I would have scored 125 buckles. Not bad, actually. Could probably get 100 bucks for that one. So that one's probably worth like 100 bucks. So this one might actually be worth like 100 bucks. Nice. Get these boxes back. Um, I mean, like, a couple of them I had uh, st stashed in my mom's. I, still, I think I've still got a couple boxes stashed in my mom's. You wonder which one is his bottom pony? He said it's Fluttershy. That's his favorite. Fluttershy is his number one pony. Fluttershy. All right, so yeah, this one. So look, now he puts it. This one. In an envelope. Actually save. <laughs> Love you, 
comic isn't necessarily a particularly good comic. It is fucking like Rob fucking Liefeld. Subgirl connections. <laughs> no, he's putting it in a package. Okay. It's not in mint condition. So I guess he's not going to get the, like the 125, right? So he's probably going to get maybe a hundred bucks, maybe a little bit less. Who knows? <laughs> That's funny. But uh, yeah, that one's actually kind of marginally valuable. There's a reason it has value. It's a hundred uh, Yeah, Darth Anarch. It's because it's of speculator market. It's because new comics are are plentiful. And I, like the reason that old comics have value and new ones don't is because new ones are easy to find. Like that's all it comes down to. It's nothing to do with the quality. It's everything to do with how uh, easy how easy they are to find. Probably no Labu. No one's going to remember because that's what we're speculating. <laughs> First issue is space safe space. Well, yeah, because like that comic ended up being canceled. All right. So, what else was the Age of Apocalypse? I actually kind of like the Age of Apocalypse. Uh, some old X Men stuff, Onslaught stuff. Mm-hmm. Some Generation X in there. You need a UV light inspection of these comics. Can you imagine if you UV lighted Pete's room? What you would find? First issue of a Beast miniseries, which actually featured uh, Karma very pr- prominently. Not sure. It was a third print, gold edition, not very valuable. So what's valuable then? I don't know if she's in the first issue or not, but... Uh... Yep. Yeah, the Beast miniseries, which featured Ka- Karma prominently, which is sort of the main thing I cared about with that one. Do you know? Okay, without Googling, how expensive is the most expensive comic book? Somebody tell me. Don't Google it. You tell me how expensive it is. Go. Like, Nito. Was this the absolutely abysmal one? Twenty-five. This one. Think had some absolutely abysmal art in it at uh, some points. The original had a white background. Okay, cool. 25K says the fish. No. The most expensive comic book is Action Comics number one, CGC 9.0, which is worth $3.2 million. $3.2 million for a comic book. Action Comics number one. Then there's Action Comics number one, CGC 8.5, worth one and a half million dollars. Then there's Amazing Fantasy number 15, 1.1 million. Holy crap. Can you imagine if you had comic books? You know what? Some of you had in the chat had the original iPhone. Did I remember when I told you about the original iPhone? How if you have saved it in the box, and you hadn't touched it back in 2007, and you sold it this year, you would have made like $40,000. Can you imagine how incredible life is and how certain things can accrue value? Do I need a drink? I think I might go get a drink. Looking at these comic book prices. Yes, my old dad, Kelly Matarera Deadpool. What? So right around there would have been when I stopped. Hey, Rob, shirtless stream when? Never. Rise of Apocalypse. That was a pretty fun mini. Yeah, that is unreal. Damage control. Lift my shirt. No. Hey, Rado, what's up? You losers can't pay me enough for that. You still have the iPod Shuffle? <laughs> Is it mint in a box? Ugh. 
More Marvel stuff. This was the uh, Danny Lore Luciano Vecchio run on uh, Champions. This was right around when I stopped being able to afford anything for Marvel. Oh, so, I wonder why. All right, you know what? Chi, reptile. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go look at my comics because I have some. Remember when I bought a comic in 1996? I still have it sealed. Let me see how much it's worth. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Yeah, right around here was when I sort of hit a point where I was like, yeah, I can't actually afford anything. Thor and Loki Double Trouble. This one was fun. Ryan North, Nico Leon, Power Pack. That one was fun. Because Power Pack's great. I lo like Power Pack was always great. Werewolf by Night by Taboo. You know how many comes? No idea. A few hundred, I would guess. Atlantis Attacks. All right, that was the uh, Agents of Atlas stuff. Krabby Joe, more where this came from. If you show us the kitchen, uh, no, Power Pack from the '80s. Oh, they were so good. Power Pack was such a good comic. I guess the Union, British superhero team. I guess I got the first few issues of the uh, Gill and Ribic uh, Eternals. Um, which I mostly picked up because Gillen uh, never gave a shit about the Eternals. But that run was like, obviously, I only, I hope I only up, read everybody. the first few issues. First four issues, but they were really good. Uh, most of the comics, get rid of them at some point. Hey, wait a second. Oh, did I not say things? Is my electronic gaming monthly back in. Uh... 1997 worth anything? <laughs> See, it's 1997, people. Electronic Gaming Monthly. Pristine condition. Maybe somebody will buy that from me. <laughs> I can't believe April 2023 isn't that far, right? Not that far at all. Just a few more weeks. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess I didn't. Uh, thank you very much for the donation, Krabby Joe. Not showing the kitchen, but thank you very much for the donation. Show the kitchen. Films are pretty much. I never cared about the Eternals. Um, I didn't get, like, I don't, I didn't really get the appeal. But Kieran Gillen and Isad Ribic did do amazing work with them. Uncanny X Force. All right, my Spider Man. My, uh, my Spider Man twenty ninety nine is worth now. $18. I've scored a cool negative $2 for my uh <laughs> my Spider-Man 20 2099. I think I bought it for 20 bucks. I didn't know anything. This guy was like, "Yo, dude, this is worth so much. You should buy it." And I was like, "Okay. I mean, sure, why not?" And then boom. Bastard, he sold me something. Now it's worth a negative two bucks. Humphreys and Alphona. This was a really good run as well. A lot of really cool stuff in uh, this particular comic series. Wait a second. And some great covers by uh, oh, Chris Anka. like some amazing Chris Anka covers. Wait a second, I have Spider Man first all new collector's item edition, still wrapped up, back from nineteen ninety six. You see this? This is actually worth like eighty three bucks. Some places are saying it's worth one twenty two. So I have this. Look at that! Boom. <laughs> Got to save that. Well, that's a great cover. Or great cover. 
This one. This is a fantastic cover. Um, apparently, the uh, I think I think the, he was originally going to use uh, put sleigh bells as the uh, the band uh, as what she was uh, as what it was uh, Betsy was listening to. Right, Mary. But they couldn't. I'm such a I'm such a cool collector, right? Such a cool collector. <laughs> Yeah, Chris Anka did some incredible covers for uh, for that particular series, and the run itself was really good. I really liked uh, Uncanny X Force. Ooh, this one! This one's worth like fifty bucks. As the giant size thirtieth anniversary special. When did this come out? Uncanny X Men, nineteen ninety two. Greg fucking land. This is from 1992, everybody. And I still have it sealed. So there you go. Sealed and everything. Fucking hated Greg Land. He has a nice collection. Says Rogue Energy. He does. This one was a good issue. You and Pete's having a comic book. Wait. All new X-Men. I actually enjoyed uh, Brian Bendis uh, on All New X-Men. I actually really enjoyed that series. I know it was very divisive. A lot of people hated it. did have Stuart Eminent for a good chunk of its uh, early run. And, you know. And you can still open yours. fucking... Im- Im- Imonen, you know? I could. I have some gems, right? How much is this worth? I think this one, oh, I think this one's worth 50 bucks. Like, and it's sealed. I don't care who you are. You can't, you cannot tell me that Stuart Imonen is not you know, one of the best fucking comic artists out there. Okay, I'm telling you, Pete, he's not. Dude's amazing. Oh, thanks, Rogue. Why didn't Pete put any of these in comic book sleeves exactly? Why didn't he? Yeah, you can be like, I don't give a shit about your. Stuart Eminence, fucking amazing. Sure. So, oh, in DH. comic collection, you buy one to read. Stop being. Stop trying to be a tedious troll, DH. Want to archive? Well, you could do that, or you could just buy one. You open it up, you read it, then you carefully put it back in its packaging, and you know you use gloves. Like there's a there's a lot of guys that will open and read them with gloves on, and then you know put put them back in uh, the packaging. So I guess I have some of these comic books from like the '90s, but I think I bought them in ho- as a whole, right? And then remember, I have I have my Game Pro magazines from like the '90s. <laughs> Anybody want to buy my Game Pro magazines from the '90s? Maybe I should see how much they're worth. <laughs> Bendis and Tarantino. Ah, yes. Hey, uh, tip top. Yeah, read it with gloves and keep it exactly. Andreas, Andreas Sorrentino, another artist I love. I mean, that cover, you know. Right off the bat, that is a striking cover. But then, I mean, it's yeah, nice. It's... Yeah, incredible. Uh... 
Game Pro magazines are showing your age, right? <laughs> oh boy. And really good layouts as well. There's somebody selling their Game Pro magazine vintage lot for like 12 US dollars. Jesus. So that just means they ain't worth anything. If somebody's online trying to sell, sell it for like 15 bucks or $12, they ain't worth anything. Oh Christ. All right, so I guess some of these comics are worth some money, some aren't. Ah, well. Maybe I should collected, like, Yu-Gi-Oh cards or something. Maybe I should have, like, kept my Pog, my Pog Slammers in pristine condition. Remember Pog? Yeah, I love Andreas Arantino. He's amazing. So again, it's like ruined. Well, people are selling Pog on on eBay for like less than twenty bucks with like a hundred pogs, mill caps, slammer, unsorted. I'm like, holy crap. People collect Andrea all Sorrentino stuff. says fuck you. What's up, YTR? Um, kind of forgot how long all new X Men ran for. Rogue Energy says, "If they rerun or add additions to the collection, yours increase in value is how it works." Okay, good to know. Yeah, the Wood Coipel X Men run. Somebody needs to send, I don't know. And actually, yeah. While we're on the subject of uh, amazing uh, artists, Olivier Coipel. Somebody send send Pete's a thousand sleeves so he can sleeve all these comic books. They probably have been like completely weathered. You still have your Giga <laughs> pet? Okay. Anybody still have their uh, Nintendo 64? Yeah. Original. I mean, those are worth some money. Fucking incredible artist. You know what? If I knew better, I would have kept like a, a PlayStation wrapped pristine condition and not open it. Here's a heads up, everybody. If there's a new system that comes out, like say the first of its kind from like a company, I don't know, like Nintendo or PlayStation or something, keep it wrapped up. Maybe in about 20 years from then, it'll be worth something. Like I said, the iPhone original got sold for like 40K or something like that. 40 or 45K. Let me look it up. Uh, do I know how many comments I actually have? No, no idea. Original iPhone sold for... um. Sold at auction. Let me check. I did bring this up before. $39,000. The original iPhone got sold for at auction in October. That is a lot of money. By your house. Only if you have kept that iPhone for 15 years. This issue. Yeah, Nintendo Power David was Lopez, probably worth more. Also, yeah. great artist. Took you 10 years to complete Gauntlet? Wow. You have the Sega Genesis that belonged to your kids, but is very used. I see. 
well, maybe it's still worth something. A lot of people are looking for like their original vintage systems. Not any like new duplicates. Yeah, or this emulators. issue just sort of... A lot of that issue is uh, really just like, this is why the X-Men are amazing sort of deal. It's a shame about the fact that Wood turned out to be such a terrible person. The Brian Wood turned out to be so fucking garbage. LeBron who? I'm going to have to Google this. Um, X-Men Gold. I don't think I read that one for very long. I think I only read the first issue just because fucking Guggenheim. Yes, this. Now they went the size barrier. All right, how much longer does he do Simon this? Spurrier and Rocky Kim on uh, X Force. That was really good. Holy crap, he does this the entire time. Uh, we're not even halfway through. <laughs> well, I'm sure this was exciting for him. So what did Brian Wood do that he doesn't like Brian Wood? Let me go to his wiki page. Maybe that'll tell me something. I'm not lifting my shirt. Why does... Uh, yes, that is... Uh, that was Psylocke. Uh, oh. She does not look like that anymore. Or, well... She kind of does? All new X Factor. So yeah, uh, so Psylocke... Psylocke's been split in half. Uh, Elizabeth Raddock, who was Psylocke for, you know, most of the history, she is back in her white body, while the Asian body is once again, uh, in the control of Quanon, who originally had the, uh, whose body it originally was. Cool. You gotta, you have a rear game called Super Mario RPG on Super Nintendo. Okay. Well, why don't you save it? Maybe Google and see how much it's worth. Classic X Factor. Meh. Make your belly like Jim Thorne Pearson. Right, Jack T. He he bitches about the comics he bought. But then he's talking about Brian Wood. I checked out his wiki page and there were some accusations laid on him. But the accusation was because he offered a, a I guess, um, somebody his hotel room number. And that was it. Okay, I mean, all right. Fuck Jordan Peterson. Yeah, I've got a lot of, uh, I've got a fair bit of the David Peter, or Peter David, uh, X Factor run. Well, who wants him to lift his shirt? They want to see the moves. Got a little bit of Astonishing X-Men. This was right when I got back into uh, collecting comics. Right here. Uh, I was getting these in the mail. So, like... When did this come out? Wait a second. He was getting them in the mail? Let me see. Got a little bit of Astonishing X-Men. Mm -hmm. This was right when I got back into uh, collecting comics. Right here. Uh, I was getting these in the mail. Okay. So, like... When did this come out? Astonishing. When was that one? That was... 2006. So... 2006 was when I started uh, getting comics again. Um, well, I had no idea what, like, I had no idea what was going on. Like, I had no idea uh, 
what comics were going, what comics were like, who was writing what. Um, so I just like picked a handful of comics uh, to subscribe to. And uh, I got them in the fucking mail, uh, which meant they were always three months uh, after they were released by the time I got them. Pretty soon he'll probably start showing more skin. Maybe this is making you hungry. Yeah. So June 2006 is when I started collecting comics again uh, with Astonishing X-Men being one of the ones that uh, that I ended up uh, subscribing to. Yeah. And he remembers all of this. Okay. Yeah, Warren Ellis did a little bit of uh, Astonishing X-Men. After after Joss Whedon left uh, Astonishing X-Men, uh, Warren Ellis took it over and got weird. New Mutants. Sure, he's calling somebody weird, yeah. yeah. Adnan and Landing, New Mutants. Good run. Can you imagine he found a hundred dollar uh, comic Black book? Heart, I don't think. I wonder if he's gonna like take the time to look through all his comic books again, like give it a second run. You know what I mean? No, Blackheart did not show up in the new uh, in the uh, DNA New Mutants. Random issue of Daredevil, of the Wade Chichetto Daredevil run, because why the fuck not? Shirt emojis. Show me all the uh, show all those comics in detail. Sure. Mm-hmm. That bracelet of his must smell ripe. Maybe it does. Yeah. So far, these are all comics I'm getting rid of. Pete's is, I still find getting rid of. Um, Pete's saving grace is that he's got the dong. Yeah. He's got the dong. He can get it on. Another box. I'm sure a lot of ladies are fantasizing right now about being on Pete's bed after looking through all those comic books. Who's hot and heavy right now? I know some people are. Those uh, comic yes, books. Ultimates. Those comic books totally turn somebody on. The ponies as well. <laughs> this was a really good uh, comic series. Kenneth Roquefort on the art. Yeah, this comic was uh, <laughs> this is really good, like, really high concept stuff. Speaking of Wakanda and Black Panther, I haven't seen the new Black Panther. I need to watch that. Uh, maybe, maybe sometime soon. Thought to sell my comics at a used comic store. Uh, I mean, used comic stores aren't, aren't really a thing, but comic stores, I mean, I don't know. I'd get very little for it. Yeah, this particular series, uh, Ultimates, basically it was kind of the start of Al Ewing going really fucking high concept. Really? The uh, Black Panther was good? Okay. I mean, I really need to see that. Um, I will, though. And like very soon, sort of redefining. So, his start on Cosmic Marvel and sort of like examining 
Marvel's entire cosmology. Yeah, then Ultimate Squared by Ewing and Foreman. Hey, Susie. Mighty Avengers. What's up? Can you imagine? This was Al Ewing starting on uh, redefining Monica Rambeau. Can you imagine him doing it with ponies and the comic books all over the bed? I can. Love Modoc's theme from Marvel vs. Capcom. The one problem with uh, Mighty Avengers, Greg fucking land. Gods, I hate Greg fucking land. Okay, Pete's. He's goddamn terrible. Pete's is so judgy on other people's past, but yeah, with Foodie Beauty. No, don't worry about her past and all the stuff that she's done. He overlooks it, and then he overlooks his own past. But yet, he constantly judges people, other people, on their past. How hypocritical of Pete's. But that's just the way he goes. Right, Marie? He's too much. He is. And here's the thing. Like, you look at this, and it's like, oh, wow, that looks photorealistic. It's because he fucking traces photos. Like, literally, he's just fucking tracing photos. Oh, so is that what is happening? People are saying he's tracing photos? Okay. And what's worse is, uh, more often than not, he's tracing the exact same photos all the goddamn time. Oh, okay. In-depth, in-depth comic book world chaos. Harder, not harder. That artist traces photos. Right, but it's just like, it's the same. If you read one Greg Land, like if you read one comic that Greg Land has done work for, done the art for, you've read every single Greg uh, comic that Greg Land has uh, done the art for. Greg Land comics. Let me see Tracing. Let me see what comes up if I put it as Tracing. Captain Britain and the Mighty Defenders. This one was. Uh, this was a good one. I googled Greg Land comics tracing, and the first thing that came up was Reddit. Has anyone found actual examples of Greg Land tracing from the prawn? Are you serious, people? Marvel Comics, Greg Land is a professional tracing artist. Greg Land, ripoff slash tracing slash recycling thread, gen discussion. Jesus Christ. Is like it that serious? Series. Al Ewing again with Alan Davis and Mark Farmer. This one was uh, Secret Wars, I believe. Eh? Ooh, yeah, this one was Secret Wars. Nice, Secret Wars. That's pretty cool. Okay, Greg Land? No, no, I, I'm totally... Like, I don't know what Greg Land is like as a person. From what I understand... Curl Connection says, Monty, how's Lola and Martha? Did you fix the student visa situation? Yeah, we're fixing it. It seems uh, DLF has been doing certain things to try and get Martha deported still. He's still doing it, and we're still here. So, you know, things are still happening, but we're figuring it out. Martha is here to stay. New Avengers, more Al Ewing. No, from what I understand, um, Greg Land is apparently... The nicest guy. Moon Knight? Uh, I don't think I've got any Moon Knight comics. Yeah, from what, I've been, from what I understand, Greg Land is apparently, like, the nicest guy out there. Like, just, like, a really good guy. Like, just, you know. You know, a good dude. I just despise his art. Because, like I said, as soon as you read one com- like, as soon as you look at the art in one comic... Like Greg Land has done, you have seen everything. He is deported. Nina and Michelle, there's a running gag. It seems Dragon Lord Frodo is saying that Martha is British and she shouldn't be in Canada. She's on a student visa and he's been 
trying to have my cat deported by calling the SPCA and animal shelters. No bullshit. He has actually tried to do that. And he has threatened to do it multiple times, telling me that he is calling animal shelters, saying that I have a British cat in Canada that should be deported because her student visa is expiring. Strong. Because he just does the same shit over and over and over. Just tracing the same goddamn things. <laughs> Scotty Young variant for U.S. Avengers. That is intense, Sasha. Was this the comic that had... No, it wasn't this one. It wasn't this issue. Right, DLF is on something. And if you didn't know, what he's been doing is he's been splicing all types of uh, R-rated imagery into his videos to try and get my channel shut down. That's what he's been doing lately. Yeah, my years ago, my ex-boyfriend was in comics and books in a big way. He sold a bunch of comics and they were all in plastic covers, but they were worth a lot of he, They might have been older comics. If they were worth a lot of money, they were probably older stuff, older things. Studio Ghibli? The I mean, cringe. no novels, like no books by them. The cringe is super strong with the LF, it is. <laughs> Very strong. Is that Red Hulk? No, I don't think this is the count. <laughs> How thrilling. Yeah, I just... I love that they managed to... I love that Al Ewing managed to fit in a Monty Python joke that made... that fit the story. What does Red Hulk have a mustache? Why is the guy who that? Because the general who is uh yeah gets in the why we watch in his comic collection has he explained himself? Oh it's better because Doreen because Squirrel Girl is Canadian. Half Canadian anyway. Hey, something. Squirrel Girl's half Canadian, so she prefers kids in the hall. She's got a sim for kids in the hall. Anyway, uh that that particular Red Hulk has a mustache because the guy who turns into the Red Hulk has a mustache. Another power pack comic. Just a one shot. A lot of these old men comic artists. Have... Um, I can kind of see where you're coming with that. There is definitely a degree of, um, man, this was such a disappointing run. Magnificent Miss Marvel by uh, Saladin Ahmed and Minky Jung. Good art. Yeah, I can sort of see there is definitely certain styles. How many comics do I have? Not uh no idea. Right, Marie? Like there are there is a certain comic book style. How many comic books does he have? I'd say he has about maybe 120 to 140 per case. Times that by 10. So under fifteen hundred, but over a thousand is what I'm speculating. I guess is uh, how I would kind of put it. The lady boys um, can be so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So what is P showing us now? A lot of your comments. Oh well, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm picking. Okay. Up. That's what I uh, was. What I read was marble. All right, Pete's. We got some Captain Marvel. What else? You know, one of the things I wish I had done. Captain Marvel. 
that would have been so easy and I could have done um, on a laptop is Bitcoin. Back in like 2011, when guys were using their laptops to farm Bitcoin, I'm like, why didn't I know about Bitcoin? What was I doing in 2011? I could have been doing so many things. I could have been farming for Bitcoin. And if I had farmed for Bitcoin back in the day, do you know how much people have made off that stuff? It's so incredible how these little things that you could have been doing when you look back could have made you so much money. Particular, um, this particular, uh, this, sir, this is a weird one. The first four issues were drawn by Dexter Soy, who did a really good job. And then for some reason, uh, the final two issues of this arc were by, uh, Emma Rios. I'm not complaining about the change in art because I you live, you learn. love Emma Rios. Okay. I mean, very different style of artistry there. Harry Clark stained glass works. With Gomo, he made millions. No, I did not see S um, S W S. Is that soft white underbelly's interview with Gomo? Uh, what did Gomo make millions from? Is it the Bitcoin? Like just so good. Like, look at that punch that the character throws. Like, there's movement there. Mm-hmm. Sure, Pete's. I guess he's... He gets these books for the story and also the art. I guess so, if you have the time. I love how much uh, Emma Rios' art moves. Oh, Gummer, it, Gummo is a hacker, so he had a backer give him ten million or so to buy computers and mine, and he got a percentage. Yeah, uh, I know somebody that was mining. Uh, they were mining with a rack. They had like a, a few racks at a house in Atlantic Canada, and when Bitcoin was super low, he was pissed because, of course, you got to pay for the electricity. And you gotta um you gotta do a lot of other stuff, right? Electricity cost and you know maintenance if your if your system goes down. But he was mining Bitcoin. And he was so depressed when it wasn't going well, when Bitcoin was super low. But then look, it skyrocketed. So he was doing really good. But yeah, ten million dollars to buy computers. Yo, there were some like Oh my OMG with the mining days before the last few hive havens of Bitcoin, there were people who were spending millions on like a factory just full of um video cards mining Bitcoin all day long. It was incredible how much money people were making. Obviously, I mean she does fantastic work at tone as well. Uh, Sapphire, check who out. Sorry, one second. Harry Clark. Oh, Harry Clark. What do you think of Ligma? Ligma balls. Hey, Taggy Talks. Yeah, it's just like... The way this character is clutching at the sheets... Emma Rios is just so amazing. I wonder how many views Pete's got for this. Absolutely my favorite comic artist. Let me check it out. He actually um, got a pretty good amount of views for showing comic books. Whoops. Yeah, again, I... 
don't have the first two issues of the uh, Deconic Captain uh, Marvel run. Enters a cat, assemble. Facts, Jack T. I wish I was a part of, you know, but if I knew about Bitcoin, I'm sure a lot of people wish. Just like that. Remember that story about that guy who um, threw away his Bitcoin and they were worth over like 100 mil and they're in some dump? A hundred million dollars just thrown away. I'm sure that person is still kicking themselves to try and find it. Imagine that. But yeah, I guess if you have a rich backer and, you know, uh, there is an opportunity and something comes along, then why not? There's always people looking for opportunities these days. Uh, more Captain Marvel. All right, yeah, that was the... Uh... The comics have been sent in with Draw Chicken. More Captain Marvel by a different creative team. And then yeah. there was another creative team. Hey. Forget who that run was by. And the Margaret Stall run is pretty okay. Wow, I can't believe you did this for two and a half hours, though. Uh, and then the Kelly Thompson uh, Captain Marvel run, which is still going. So, like, kudos to Kelly Thompson on uh, she's close to fifty issues on on. Uh, yeah, the Cap I wonder how much the PS One is worth. Catherine Iman and uh, Avengers Annual. Oh. The original PS1 is worth 36 to 720 bucks. Really? The original PS1? You only gonna get that much for the original? Holy crap, you'd think it'll be worth a lot more. And Maria's is cute too. She is kinda. Which. Wasn't that one? Do I not have the? Uh, do I not have the issue of? Here's the Mar Ma Tamaki Leon She Hulk. Oh, a second, I want to check something here. Which issue? Which issue of this was it that had uh wasn't this one? Hey, do you guys know that there was a Nintendo PlayStation system? Who knew who knew that there was a Nintendo PlayStation system? It was a prototype console made by Sony that was originally going to be a, a Super Nintendo Entertainment System add-on. 200 were reportedly made, but only one is confirmed in existence. And the console can play Super Famicom and has a CD-ROM drive. So the controller has Sony PlayStation written on it, but a Nintendo logo on the back, and it's shaped like a Super Nintendo controller. So one in existence. So if you have it new, it's worth $1.4 million. If it's loose, three hundred and twenty-five grand. If it's complete, 553. If you have a manual, it's 138,000 for the manual, 221,000 for the box. What? For a manual? There is one issue of this series. Uh, that is a lot. You might not have. Of money. I might not have that issue. It is nuts. So I'm trying to see if I can find a specific issue of uh, Nintendo. 
Now, what is he looking for? Yeah, I guess I don't. There is a particular issue of uh, Avengers Assemble where um, where Spider Woman uh, got Hulk to make her a sandwich. She did not eat her treats yet. Yeah, there is one. I, I don't know. Any sticky pages? Yeah, there's one particular issue of Avengers Assemble. Comic like Avengers Assemble. It's probably the My Little Pony comics that we saw earlier in this stream. Where Spider Woman used her pheromones on the Hulk to get him to make her a sandwich. And it was amazing. Yellow stains? I don't know. Most likely just for me going too long without actually washing my sheets. Ew. Yeah. yeah. I mean, peace, come on. If there's staining on your sheets, you gotta do what's right. You gotta wash them. No excuses. Let's go quickly. Zero. Funniest comic I have? Uh... Funniest comic series I have would absolutely be uh, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. And it's not even close. Sandwich? Yeah, the Chelsea Kane Mockingbird, which I enjoyed the series, but in retrospect, I don't like Chelsea Kane as a person. Strike Force by Teeny Howard. Mm -hmm. That was a yeah, pretty okay series. Peace doesn't like somebody as a person as if he's ever met them. That's the Morbius series by Vita Ayala. And remember, this is the same guy that lives with Foodie Beauty. Which I picked up so, so specifically because it was by Vita, uh, written by Vita Ayala. And because uh, they're pretty good. It was a pretty good run. Uh, Gwenpool Strikes Back by Leia Williams and David Baldion. That one was a lot of fun. I asked the Amazing Mary Jane by uh, by Lance. Mockingbird like Task Taskmaster. Uh, well, no, she's. I mean, she's a fighter, but she's also like a scientist. Yeah, this uh, this was a fun comic. What comic was that, Mary Jane? Oh. Mary I, Jane Watson helping uh, Mysterio to make a... I hate how he handles his comic books. It's so shameful. Movie about himself. And so wrong. Uh, new Agents of Atlas. This was a fun one. As you'd expect of Greg Pack. I think I'll ever upgrade from a single bed. Who knows? When I need to. Right, core. As Cora says, someone may have allegedly said something off color in the 80s and Peace will not like them forever. Or it could just be alleged. And Peace is like, okay, if it's alleged, it means it's true. White Fox. Why doesn't he use cotton gloves? I've been saying that. He should put the gloves on so that the oil from his hands. Oh, the Realms Giant Man again. This was a really fun comic. The oil from his hands uh, damaging every single one of those comic books because he's going through so many boxes and leaving deposits on those comic books. Why are my comics going to protect the Because they don't matter. Like, I wasn't, like, I wasn't getting them for, like, to collect them, to save them. Thanos series by uh, Teeny Howard and Dariel Olivetti. Pretty meh. Nebula series by Vida, Vida Ayala was... Exactly, bad collector. Not bad at all. Uh, oh, yes, the uh, Black Widow run by the uh, Soska sisters, who I think are, uh, I think mostly do like a lot of uh, sort of creep show stuff. It's pretty good. Do I not have the first issue of Kelly Thompson's Black Widow? Seems weird I'd miss that. Yeah, 
he got some good ones. He does. But these are, I think, still the ones he's going to... Yeah, this was a really good series. He's going to get rid of. Somebody send him some sleeves. Also, I like her hair. I like I like undercuts. Only if they want to. Anybody could send send him some sleeves. Anybody. Only if they want to. Um, but yeah, the uh, the Kelly Thompson, Elena Casagrande, Casagrande uh, Black Widow was a uh, fantastic comic. King Capri. Where is her? Also, this uh, this issue, this comic has uh, villains talking about like why it's a bad idea to screw with uh, the Black Widow. Yeah, this is sort of like. Uh, did I hear Wonder Woman three is canceled? Yeah, disappointing, I guess, for people who are fans. Yeah. Kelly Thompson does really like giving her artists uh, sort of this type of layout where mm -hmm. the characters just sort of move across the uh, move across a spread. See, can't tell Wonder Woman 3, address it. Yeah. Sucks for the people who enjoy those movies. I really like the uh, the runs that they do. Like, I really bit like those uh, <laughs> you the get sequences that happen pretty regularly in uh, Kelly Thompson com comics. You hope they get ruined? <laughs> the guy inside the middle looks like Pete? It does. Wait a second. Let's go back. It does look like Pete's. Yeah, it is so Pete's with the hair and everything. And look, ironically, this guy has gloves on. And Pete should have gloves on right now. Wait a second. Yeah. And look, it, it, this looks like the knife he uses while cooking all the time. See? It does. It's like Pete's, except in a comic book. With less greasy hair. Kelly Thompson does really like giving her artists uh, sort of this type of layout. Where the characters just sort of move across the uh, move across a spread. See, can't tell Wonder Woman 3, address it. Yeah. Sucks for the people who enjoy those movies. I really like the uh, the runs that they do. Wait a it's second. I really bit like those. Uh, Foodie Beauty says, cook stream later, 19 minutes ago. Cook stream later. Okay. Ha. Ah. Action sequences that happen pretty regularly in uh, Kelly Thompson com comics. Another Black Widow series, this one by Jerry Hoser. Shauna McGuire. Uh, Shauna McGuire wrote a uh, Spider Gwen comic. And she switched to Ghost Spider as her name. Are we going to watch his uh, cook stream Ali. later? He's Ali. Yeah, if he's going to cook, if Pete is going to cook later, then yeah, we're going to watch it. And then Foodie Beauty is allegedly supposedly going to cook. So we're going to watch that as well. Love Miyazawa. I hope his relatives are teaching her some traditional foods. We shall see how he turns out. Well, just look at how good uh, Miyazawa's yeah. art is. I will get to see the place. True. Dude's amazing. Also, one of my favorite uh, panel sequences. Yeah, busy day, but it's okay. I just love it. I just love her uh, leaning over to pet the kitty. I just got like, it's so much personality there. Yeah, Takeshi Miyazawa's Amazing. He's one of my absolute favorite artists. You'd rather watch Foodie Beauty. You know what you're getting with Miyazawa art? And it's always great. 
right Ziggy it's kind of disgusting that foodie beauty is doing what she's doing she's seen how successful Pete's cooking streams are so she's copying him but how many times have people asked her like hey how about you cook because we'd like to see you cook and she would always brush it off because she just didn't want to now I guess because she had seven people in her live stream she wants to cook now of all the times Cause she's seen yeah, she's seen Pete's being successful with cooking. That's kind of wrong. That's really kind of wrong. I don't like that. Great. Yeah, you know, there's always so much uh, charm to his characters. You hope she stands while she chops. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Ziggy. I think it's this passive aggressiveness that she has. Now she's doing it. She's been asked. She's been asked to cook regularly for years. And she didn't want to. Now she wants to start cooking because peace is successful. Okay. Tanahisi Coats, Captain America run. I did read. Uh, I did collect the Tanahisi Coats, Captain America run. Um. Pretty specifically because it was a uh, coat. Um, I was enjoying his Black Widow or his Black Panther. I mean, and uh, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to support non-white writers on hey, Smelly Cat major comics. You know, like I kind of wanted to support Marvel giving one of their sort of A-list titles. To someone who wasn't white. A fish by any other name says she's competitive with Pete. She is in not such good ways. Mary says, yes, she wants to ruin him. But then again, she wants to make every one of her men cook. So it was kind of expected. The cooking from her was coming sooner or later. Yeah, the cooking was coming. I'm good, smelly cat. What's the latest with Queen? Well, she says she's cooking later, Anonymous. So I did read the uh, Tanahisi Coats. Let me comment, like, I want to explain to more. You know, it's bad when she's copying Pete's. Mm -hmm. so I did enjoy, I did actually mostly enjoy Tanahisi Coats on Captain America. There was some stuff that I didn't really entirely like about it, but there's a fair bit of stuff that I did really like. Also, he used. Uh, yeah, issue of no worries. Black no. Panther one is sort of messed up today. Yeah, as a uh, coach Black Panther, I decided to give it a try. Most of it I enjoyed. There were bits that dragged a little bit. I thought a lot of Black Panther. He had a pretty long run of Black Panther. Uh, Black Panther sequels and tie-ins and spin-offs and shit. Shuri. By, ne by Nettie Okorafor. Right. Foodie is cooking in a foreign country. Yeah. It's on her community tab. She posted it just a short while ago. That she's going to be cooking later. She's very good. She's a great writer. Uh... Akata Witch and Akata Warrior. Black Panther is made by Tiwaka. Yes. I'd rather watch. And Pete's most book. of his iconic runs have been by black guys. Like most of the most of the iconic Black Panther runs have been by black guys. Um, Don McGregor, back in the eighties. Uh, um, Priest, obviously. You're welcome. Uh, Reginald Hudlin, though, I think his run is a little bit more divisive, I believe. Sure, Pete's. Yeah, Nettie Okorafor is uh, just a fantastic author. Um, Ooh, quick Quicksilver. Silver. I got this comic only because uh, Ahmed, uh, or Saladin Ahmed, had already impressed me with his uh, Black Bolt uh, solo. Mm -hmm. 
Exiles. Yeah. Not as good as the original Exiles series, sadly. Is that Captain Canada? Malfa Flight. Uh, <laughs> it is. It's Captain. Anthology featuring a bunch of Canadian creators. It's Captain Canada. For sure, Ziggy. Well, we'll see what she's going to cook up. Okay. I mean, she moved. I guess she moved into a new place. She never wanted to show the kitchen. So I guess where she was, it didn't have a kitchen. I still expect her to have done a really bad decision and actually moved into a place where she has to pay for it. Hi. Hey. Or letter? I thought some new Black Panther. I haven't watched it. Uh, McGregor Black. Don McGregor. Yeah. Yes, he was very black. Kitchen shaming. Like the comic writer Don McGregor. Yes, he was mm -hmm. uh, a very black guy. He does have Marvel, Ziggy. He started out with Marvel and um, kept on progressing into other things. Um. Like, we should hug it out. Joke around about white writers, black, you know? Well, Anonymous, maybe you should tell DLF to stop putting ladyboy splices in his videos, and then I'll think about it. Uh, he was also, he also did a uh, Deathlock series in the 90s um, with a black man as Deathlock. So yeah, I mean he like he I believe is it very well? Give me a second. Was he the one who did Oh shit, Don McGregor. DLF? Wow. DLF wants to hug it out. Mm -hmm. Was I thinking of somebody out. else? You will relay that. <laughs> Was I thinking of a different writer? Life of Lindsay says, What makes someone very black? Shit, I didn't even. Somebody please send Pete some nicely colored shirts for Christmas. I know this is this is a very Cornwall look of him. Like right here, right in front of you. Very Cornwall. Dwayne McDuffie. McDuffie was the guy I was trying to remember. Should I mix him up with Dwayne McDuffie? Uh but okay, so yeah. Don McGregor is like the only white guy to have a genuinely iconic run on Black Panther. And then Dwayne McDuffie was actually the guy I was mixing him up with. Yeah, I didn't show dinner on stream. All right. Then this is the last box of comics that I'll be getting rid of. He has like three different colored shirts. We got to bright him up. Yeah, we need some yellows, some blues, maybe orange, you know, like, like a bright green. Cheer him up. It's for my little pony shit. Ooh, why does he always... America, oh. this one was not a good series, unfortunately. Why does he always skip the My Little Pony stuff? Come on, Pete, show it to us. Hampered by the fact that like, how would I describe Cornwall different? That Cornwall is different from the days of like the early 2000s, the 90s, and the 80s. A lot of people are actually moving to Cornwall these days because it's affordable compared to where they're from. So, I feel like Gabby Rivera did not know how to write a comic. And it didn't feel like she was given. Is Cornwall a white? Help. 
Uh, America Chavez made in the USA. This series I didn't like because it uh, retconned a lot about the character. Is Cornwall a white suburb? I would say Cornwall uh, is now pretty diverse. And Very like diverse. Yay, power pack. More power pack. Yeah, you'd think he'd have more comic-related shirts. He does have Dazzler, though. And Gygus. Uh, championship. Patsy Walker Hellcat. Great series. Really fun comic. Uh, love Brittany Williams art. Um, it is hard to live in a place that isn't diverse, but then yeah, a lot of places were that back in the day. She is like Brittany Williams is such a good artist. Oh, am I growing out my beard? We'll see. We'll see, Mary. We'll see what happens with it. Anything can change at any point in time, any day. Uh, like just a beautiful, gorgeous, like just such cute art. And like the comic as a whole was like really fun and cute. And then it kind of turned out that uh, Kate Leth was uh, kind of a jerk. Gail wants me to be your side man. Yeah, it turned out that uh, it turns out that Kate Leth, uh, Kate Leth, the uh, writer, kind of a jerk. Are you going to do um, Kate Leth uh, started a group called the uh, comic books, comic shop Valkyries. It was. Uh, a... Are you going to do a long one like the singers from System of a Down had? <laughs> I wish I can't really grow that that, you know, thick of a beard. Maybe a group do... that was like sort of specifically like is dedicated to women who work in comic shops. Um. Suppose women and non-binary people, I guess. Um, but primarily women initially. Uh, and then, like, for sure, I sort of like tried to, like, basically like take ownership of the group, which was shitty. And I forget what else Left did. Um, but I remember there was stuff about about them just being. Kind of jerky. Yeah, I could do that. A fish by any other name. I get ready with a me. force, which had one of my favorite uh, new characters. Where is she? All right, how far are we in? Okay, we're Look still at her. going She's strong. She's adorable. Singularity. Love Singularity. She's such a cute character. My favorite sentient sentient universe. And I just look at the fucking like you know like you get panels like this and it's just like basically she's like living like she's like just the way the stars sort of move around shaving request will be right you're not gonna do that <laughs> all right let's get back to the comics if you're just coming in we are two hours and 15 minutes in of watching uh pete's go over his comic books but really not going over his uh my little pony comic books and guess what i have some comic books of myself not of myself. I mean, I have comic books myself that are worth some money. Maybe not a lot, but it's worth some money. And uh, yeah, I might sell them in another 20 years. <laughs> or now, who knows? Because I think the whole comic book collection thing, unless you started collecting back from like the 80s, 
the latest 80s, early 90s, like your collection isn't going to really worth much unless you buy from other people. But if you ever had one of those action comics, number one, OMG, the amount of uh, the amount of monies you would have had. Funny how certain things are worth so much money while other things aren't. Why is like a PS1 not worth a lot of money in box while a iPhone 1 is worth so much? Puzzling. She's adorable. Sexy bots want me. I know, Fluffy. Sadly, uh, she hasn't really done much in a long time. Yeah, she's like, it's such a great design and she's such a great character. And then... Once uh, A Force ended, just she had nowhere to land. You always laugh or have a fun time <laughs> seeing manly men do makeup for fun. Can you imagine? Maybe um, we could do like a makeup train. Like it could be the Gut Boys house and it would be Pete's. I don't know. S Jam could do the makeup of Pete's and then I do the makeup of S Jam. Wouldn't that yeah, be like when Carla Pacheco ran on the other woman? And uh, who's here? Just Perez, yes. Yeah, yes. see, Pacheco Boom. Perez, uh, Spider Woman was good. And if anybody hasn't seen the Gut Boy stuff from uh, S Jam, I mean, you missed out. Marvel's voices, they're still doing this. Um, so yeah, Marvel started uh, this thing where like they put out. These anthology comics, short stories by writers from specific groups. So, like, this one is just a bunch of black comic creators. Um, this one... Also black creators, I think. Um, Indigenous Voices, which was uh, very cool. Mm -hmm. Because they don't get a lot of uh, attention. Uh, Win of Marvel, this one was... Uh... Oh, my God. That's Momoko. Oh, man. Behind the scenes, get ready with me. Oh, man. This is like an early Peach Momoko cover, I think. Yeah, I'm busy with 90 Day Fiance. I want to do Monty Does stuff. But the thing is that um, I have a lot of responsibilities right now. So I have to make sure I'm putting my time and my money where it matters. When did this one come out? Twenty one. Moving up too early. Fuck! Look at this. Look at this cover. You know why he likes that cover? He's probably picturing himself on that cover. Let's take a look. I mean, it's a good cover. Woman of Marvel. Is that Scarlet Witch? It is Scarlet Witch. You don't have that, like, uh, yeah, very, he probably does picture himself. Look at this cover. Oh, and she did a. Oh, uh, thank <laughs> you, a fish. Fucking. Is that like Lady, was it Deathstroke or Deathstrike? Lady Death Strike. Is oh, damn Peach Momoko. Is that Lady Deathstrike? I'm not that. It's a one page thing, but like just. I'm totally not that keen on comics. So I, I, th I think that's what that person is. Or who that person is.
love uh, Peach Momoko. This was the Kelly Thompson run on Deadpool, I think. Yeah, this was Kelly Thompson's run on Deadpool here. Bacalo covers. Chris Bacalo on covers. I want to hear him answer your question if he's single. Uh, I am single, Lexi. I am single. <laughs> he's really keen on saying that he's single. It was like, I'm single and I'm a looking. Go, Pete's go. Yes. Or not. Snapshots. Cy uh, Cyclops focused uh, comic. That one was really good. I take it back. Since what Pete's did to BBJ, it's a no. No Pete's no. Rotters. means that this can smash that like button people for those who are here how far did i get before we're losing the will to live <laughs> yeah something like that oh look is that sister from like uh wakanda you know the ones with the she has the gloves on i really need to see black panther 2 all right yeah the first that run ended I forgot that that uh, I forgot that that run of Marauders actually came to an end. I think it got relaunched, and I don't think I got any of the uh, relaunched version. Excalibur, yeah, Marauders that was pretty okay. Excalibur by uh, Tini Howard and Marcus Toe, pretty good. Fallen Angels. This was. Maybe the most disappointing uh, comic to come. Ziggy says, pizza's cruel. Poor kitty didn't want to eat after he shook her up. Aww. Out of the, uh, the Krakoa age of comics. Krakoa era. Not that I'm a big fan of the House of M, uh, Powers of M, or House of X story. I don't, I wasn't a fan of, uh, of House of X, Powers of X. But yeah, Fallen Angels was probably the most disappointing comic to come out of uh, the current era of X Men. Uh, I see, Smell. Because like, I like David Walker. I know, or Brian Edward Hill. Brian Edward Hill. Yo, know, Brian Edward Hill is you know he's a solid writer. Um, Pete, this, this is flying over like everybody's head. It's just a bad comic. Leia Williams X Factor or Williams and Baldean X Factor. That one was a really good comic that got fucked over by, uh, got kind of fucked over by editorial interference. Ooh, nice. Ayala Reyes, New Mutants. Hell yeah. Nice, uh, smelly cat. Start the car? Yeah, start the car. I started like a week ago. I started, I did it like a week and a half ago. I'll try to do it again soon. Until's upset I took her. Yeah. And more new mutants. Okay. Yeah, I really liked uh what I read of uh Ava Eva Eva Ayala and Rod Reyes uh New Mutants. And from what I hear it like remain fantastic after I stopped being able to read it. He's so fixated on his interest he forgets his audience. Yeah. Oh, nice, Smelly Cat. Always improving. That's always a good thing. Is what Sword. I think. Al Ewing. More Al Ewing. Always good. Al Ewing is always uh, a good time. Oh, and Valerius shitty. Yeah, Valerius skitty. I forgot that he was the one who did the uh, the series. He's really good. I fucking love Skitty's art. All right, if you beer with me, not much left. <laughs> Uh, 
loved Valerius Giddy since uh was it Journey into Mystery that he did uh some issues of with uh Catherine Emin and I as Erko. You buy them based on the art or art author brands are they? Well look, it's um what's that uh Symbion, the Symbion King. What's it called again? You know how uh Venom has one like that's the that's like that, that's the king. Smelly Cat says comics are inspiring like that too to people who like to draw. They make great art in spool. They do, but this is the person who had the sword all black. You know that sword from the Love and Thunder movie, the one that uh, is a god killer sword. This is the original owner, all black. Uh. What's the symbiont king? Null. Yes, it's null. So that's null. Is Does he have all black in his hand? Uh, Let me check. Usually a mix of all three. Betty. He does it not. Usually a mix of all three. So some I would buy specifically because of the writer. Like, We're here till the end. Thank you. Yeah. Al Ewing, you know you're getting good comics. If you buy an Al Ewing comic, you know you're in for a great time. Uh, Valerius Giddy again. Yeah, you know you're getting some great art. Um, Children of the Atom. It was an interesting premise. So sometimes Milligan all red ex uh, ecstatics. Ecstatics was an amazing uh, comic back. Doesn't then. look nice to me, Pete's X Men Red. Cool. A lot of that was down to me enjoying Tom Taylor's work on all new uh, all new Wolverine. That cover looks nice. So does that cover in that one? Man, I wish I liked this series more. New Mutants Dead Soul. Uh, and no one was texting me. Is this your favorite channel right now? I think so. Even I wish Ecstatics. Yeah, Ecstatics. Let me get back to that one. I mean, it's fucking all red, you know? Pete's are killing It's Michael me. goddamn all red. It was a cool cover. And I mean, like, it's a uh, sequel to a early 2000s. Um, comic. So yeah, X, yeah, is X Force, which turned into Ecstatics. Um, it was a comic from like the uh, early two thousands. Uh, the premise of that series was that it was a team of like reality TV mm -hmm. superheroes. Like it, it, it was reality TV. Thing, so it's like it was uh, sort of like is a satire of reality TV at a time when it was on its uh, when it, at a time when it was uh, rising. Um, oh, nice, Eve L. Ewing. Wow, look at those. Yeah, I mean Michael Allred. Michael Allred is just an amazing fucking artist. Like that guy is just incredible. Again, it's one of those things where, again, if you pick up, uh, like, if you want a good comic. Ziggy says, my ex was a comic book collector. Our whole basement was a shrine, boxes upon boxes. I'm kind of biased. I have a bad taste in my mouth. So did he ever sell his collection? Is he still collecting? What happened? You can just pick up uh, anything drawn by Michael Allred, and it'll be worth reading, guaranteed. Just because he's so good, and he absolutely always brings out the best in the artists he work with. He works with. Yeah, Ecstatics was like a parody of reality TV, uh, as it was like at a time when it was just starting to become bit really, really big. Um, so yeah, it was a team of it was a team of mutants uh, who were like superheroes for for a TV show. Mm -hmm. And it was weird and brilliant. Yeah, New Mutants Dead Souls. 
I wish I liked the series more. Because it gave, like, it was a well-crafted comic. Oh. The issue I had with Dead Souls. He rarely sold them when he did it was a series. Was he ever thinking about selling his whole collection? Is that it took a story that I wanted to see told and told it completely opposite of the way that I would have wanted it to be told. You know, it was like, it was a, told a story about a specific character and that character was almost, was absent from almost all of it. Uh, what if magic? Oh, look, one of his favorites, magic. This was really good. I'm sure it was. By, uh, Williams and Andrade. He loves magic. I didn't watch the TV show. I heard it mixed reviews about it, though. It's because of the hot cover. Mm -hmm. Most likely. Yeah, this was a. Uh... This was a fantastic series. Right this is the Artificer's Argo, a maddeningly clever device created with the express purpose of killing magical wielders. This item is uniquely lethal to us. Why do you have something like that out on display? It's pretty. <laughs> mm. It's just such a weird line. Um... Who yeah. the post to going forward? Because I'm like, um, Pete's. I mean, I like the stuff, kind of, sort of. Never go wrong with the Terry Dodson cover, right? But not really. All right, so we have Generation X comics now. Great. I don't even know how I could jump in the middle of that comic series. It's like jumping into Gold World. It is kind of like that, but sometimes you got to jump in and go forward while also catching up at the start. Kind of like what I'm doing with 90 Day. I'm trying to figure out everything, learn everything. Uh, oh, speaking of which, I need to get a book. I need to get a book where I can write um, so I am up to date with the going ons of like everybody from the franchise and all the spin offs. Some of those will come. Some old comics can be. Yes. Some of the Age of X Men stuff. But ah uh, well, I take it one day at a time. Extremists, aka queer rage, the comic. What? And why does that guy look like Mr. Manhattan? You need a journal? I do. I need a journal of some sorts to keep um, certain details of people in order. Because, you know, you, you if you're going to report on certain events and stuff, you got to have a, you got to have your ducks in order, is what I feel. So I'm going to make sure, I'm just going to get a book. I could get, do a Google Doc, but usually I want to have it away from the computer because if I load programs and stuff, it sometimes slows down the stream or interferes with the stream. 
This is sleepstream mode. It is sleepstream mode. Terry Dodson. Yeah, Terry Dodson is great. Big time. Hey, Game of Girl 420, what's up? Rogue and Gambit had that series, which, uh, of course, transitioned into uh, Mr. and Mrs. X with more Dodson covers. I see. Yeah, Rogue and Gambit was like, I like that. I like that coupling. Yeah. Terry Dodson, always a good time. Miguel Simone, David Baldan. Oh, Domino. Domino run. Very good uh, comic run. Even this Domino, even this Breakland cover is pretty good. You know? He has no job and is here for money. Very true. Pete's is very uh, focused on the comic books at the moment. He probably could talk about this for hours and hours and hours. And then we reach a Greg Land cover that's good, just going to uh, fucking Greg goddamn land. This one I approve of. Yeah, this was a really fun uh, series. I mean, again, like, Dodson's looked at. We did see New Domino Ad- in Deadpool 2 movie, if you watched that movie. Uh, who was the actress again that played Domino? Uh, I forgot, but it was a good movie. Dodson's been around for almost as long as Adam Hughes. It was Zazie Beats as the actress that played yeah, Domino. Yeah, uh, the Gail Simone run on Domino was great. Was it I mean, Gail Simone Nelly? was a, like, a really good comic writer, but uh, yeah, her Domino run... Let me check. Which then transitioned into Domino Hot Shots. Um, yeah, it was just like was that really piece? great work from uh, from a great writer. But yeah, like I don't know about calling. Uh, I don't know about calling uh, Dodson the new. Where was the Where was the Domino for Kara Knightley? Let me check that out. I'm gonna check out Kara Knightley Domino. Adam Hughes. He's been around for like Dodson. The dogs have been around forever. Um, like I don't, I feel like they've been around for almost as long as um, Adam Hughes. Oh, I didn't know that Carrie Knightley was in Pirates of the Caribbean. Dead man's uh, Dead Men Tell No Tales. I I can't wait for Pirates of the Caribbean to come back. But Carrie Knightley, I like. She's a good actress. That's why I had it as new. Oh, it was a movie about a bum. Yeah, I mean, I suppose Hughes doesn't uh, show up, uh, doesn't do that much stuff anymore. Um, Hughes. Oh, yes. It was called Domino from 2005, and it starred Karen Knightley. Yeah, I mean, like Domino the, uh, Domino the, the Mutant. Not like Domino the movie, but thanks. You know, I'll look into this movie. It looks pretty good. I don't think I watched it. Sup, little nepotiz, what's going on? I don't know. I've got kind of mixed feelings about Adam Hughes in general. If I'm honest. Um, like... No. Sometimes I like Adam Hughes, sometimes not so much. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where, like, sometimes I really like his art, sometimes I'm like, eh, too cheesecake. You know, sometimes it's, sometimes I really like him, sometimes he just ends up feeling just a little bit too cheesecakey. Dad says, why does he keep all those comic books when he has My Little Pony to play with? Because he's into comic books, and he's into My Little Pony, and he loves Orange Crush. But generally, I do really like him. Generally, most of the time, I do like Adam Hughes. Um, he does. He is very good, and he does do. I mean, 
he does cheesecake very well. You know, hard to blame him for being too. How far I can put? I've got a I've got a handful of comics from the '90s, but most of it is like 2006 and later. Um, 2006 is when I started collecting comics again. Oh yes, for sure. Um, hey, fresh flowers, what's up? Better late than never. So. From then on is sort of how long, 2000, so yeah, 2006 to like 2020, maybe 2021, maybe a few in 2021, but most, no, 2020, so yeah, 2006 to 2020 is the range that most of my comics come from. Is that yelling at me? All right, so all the, those are all the comics that I'm getting rid of. He's late to the collection game. My ex has been collecting since the late 60s. Those few hundred comics, uh, those hundreds of comics, those are the ones I'm getting rid of. Right. If you're collecting since the late 60s, you have like a pretty big or huge collection, pretty expensive as well, because that's that's when the, the older they are, the more they're worth. Right. But yeah, Pete's is late. <clears throat> His comics really aren't worth much, except the ones in the 90s. He's in his mid-50s. I see. Hi, Sugar Plum. Pete's. Don't do that, Pete's. Leave the cat alone. Yeah, Pete's is getting rid of a few boxes. It's been two hours. I think uh, I don't think I'll show off the comics I'm keeping tonight. It's been two hours. It'll be in like another hour and a half if I show off the comics I'm keeping as well. Probably another two hours, frankly, because I'll want to show off more of uh, what's in the ones that I'm keeping. Yup, Pete's. We get it. Am I getting a dog? No. No, I, I'm just not comfortable with dogs. I don't like dogs, so no dogs. Why do people keep asking the same questions over and over and over? He doesn't like dogs. He doesn't. Yeah, yeah, GW. Not loving on her. I'm just not being needlessly cruel, cruel, uh, cruel to her. I just don't want to be needlessly cruel. Where are we in the video? We are at the end. About 15 minutes, literally 15 minutes left of this video. Exactly. Like other people, dogs, just not in my home. That's loving to a cat. Yeah, she's, she gets her tail boners. Right. It is every single stream. Every single one. Is this she after? She does get her tail boners. Uh, I think it might be occurring at the end as well, what he does to BBJ. Yeah, I try, GW. Yeah, it seems like he's smelling his fingers. I suspect they probably do miss the amount of uh, affection they get from Chantel. For all the people complaining about, oh, you're giving them more affection than Chantel. No, no. Chantel gave the cats way more affection than I did. Exactly, Jimmy Pete's. No, she doesn't give more affection to the cats. She neglects them. And every time I think Pete's is doing better, he goes and does something to BBJ. It's like, what's the point? Why can't you love an animal unconditionally? 
By the way, you guys have been hearing snoring for the past like hour and a half. It's not me, of course. It's Martha. She's sleeping on her cat pad right now. Her heated cat bed pad. And she's snoring away and I'm keeping tabs on her. Yeah, Ziggy, entire collection and mint condition covered gives you the big bucks. My cats are outdoor cats, keep their own population down. Good for them. Hey, Laura. Nah. I don't know that I agree that I take better care of them than Belle does. She, she does take really good care of her cats. She loves them. She takes good care of them. A lot of people would disagree with that. All right, Jack T, if that were true. Hey, hamburger eyes. The cats would be at the vet multiple times a year. Yeah, Martha is like my best friend. She's always the with last me. Event. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember, but my memory sucks. So we'll need to take them. We should probably take them. Uh, like it'd be worthwhile to take them once she gets back. Once she gets back. Um, she was supposed to take them before she left. She even promised. She's like, I'm going to take my cats to the vet before I leave. Cats never got taken to the vet because she was so busy, right? So busy. Working 80 hours a week. I haven't seen any cause for concern, though. Like, I've seen no cause for concern about either of them. Their, you know, their coats are fine. They're eating okay. Um, exactly. They're Lynn. meowing okay. They're getting, they're moving around fine. I do, Edna. Uh, taking care of it. Yeah, I, uh, I made myself some uh, burgers before. I, I had burgers. I just made myself burgers before I came on. For sure, Ziggy. I'm going to. Your treats is a little over here. The treats are gone now, so I think she has eaten them. I think she has eaten them since then. I think it's just not the time, not the right time for her to eat them, I think. I'm going to co-sign this. Timbe could have been treated a lot better. Way better than how we treated her. Especially when he was saying that she was with uh, people that used to smoke around her. And yeah, I'm like, that's why her voice was the way that her voice was. Back by Christmas. We'll see. Maybe, maybe not. At this point, she doesn't have a specific date in mind, so. Tim, you thought she was old enough? Who, Casey? Yeah, I think Casey's, I think Casey's gotten plenty old. Yeah, Martha and Lola Roach soon. Yeah. Upcoming. Casey, you're old enough already. What are you even trying to prove anymore? Stories from the cat tree. <laughs> As Ziggy says, if you don't know, feline leukemia is a virus that there's a vaccine for and they choose to isolate lonely kitty. And people were even saying, hey, uh, can you, we'll give you the money to vaccinate the cats so that Timbit isn't isolated and they would never do it. Little Nepotist says, how old is that cat? BBJ is 20 years old, just about. Yeah, I mean, like, as far as, like, you know, as far as like Casey's health goes, she's got a case of old. Like that's honestly like that's like there's nothing you can really do. Like there's nothing like as long as Casey's eating, as long as she's drinking water, I am not going to worry about her. One bit. Like I see absolutely no reason to worry about Casey one bit. She eats, she drinks. 
She bugs me. Sure, Pete's. She does all the things a cat does. She does the things a cat is supposed to do. Yeah, they don't take good care of their pets. So she is doing fine. No cause for concern there. Um, Sam, same thing. Sam eats. I mean, I suppose I never actually see Sam eating as an oral. Uh, I mean, she seems, she seems fine. Uh, sugar plum? No, I haven't taken down the rest. I haven't broken down the rest of the boxes. Yeah, I mean, as far as I know, her oral health, oral health is uh, hey, Don. doing okay. What's up? The treats that are keeping her alive, yeah. He doesn't know if her oral health is doing okay. Because remember, her breath was smelling really bad to the point where Chantel kept on saying that it stunk. If your cat's breath stinks, investigate why your cat's breath stinks. She just lives for temp- She lives to get another set of uh, another handful of temptations. That's all it is. She's just hanging on for one more uh, handful of temptations. Hmm. Box cutter. <laughs> They could, yeah, have abscesses, yeah, and it's probably painful. actually, actually, yeah, probably right because the boxes that are left are mostly big ones. Most of the, like, I'm pretty sure all the boxes that are left are big ones. You're a good cat owner, Neri. That's what you got to do: get your cat's teeth cleaned, make sure that they're good. So be proactive rather than reactive. Um, box cutter. I probably should uh, get out the box cutter. We do have one. He just doesn't know where. But cutting up the boxes is so boring. Turd cutter. Do I look more like my mom or my dad? Uh, I think I take more after my mom. Hey, Pammy. I know, Sherry, I know. Listen to podcasts. I've tried listening to podcasts. I don't have it. I don't have it in me. Right, I can't listen to podcasts. I'm not an auditory learner. No, they... My parents split when I was a kid. Big facts, Gamer Girl 420. I think Pete's my cook tonight, right? And so is Chantel. So I guess um, right now, Chantel's time's eight hours ahead of mine. So it's like 10, 21 p.m. where she's at. But she loves cooking like super late. In fact, like early in the morning. Feel better after accomplishing box mountain? Maybe. Hey, Gigi. He has all the time in the world right now to clean up those boxes, especially the ones on the floor behind him because I did see those. But hey, he's not going to do it. Why should he? Am I voting for the World Cup? I don't even know who's playing. Hey, Abby. Yeah, I don't care. She'll be cooking her third dinner at 4 a.m.? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Whichever country has the cooler national bird. That's who I'm rooting for. Whichever country has the cooler national bird, that's who I'm voting. Uh, that's who I'm rooting for. How are the cats? The cats are fine. <sighs> uh, I've taken a uh, some box. I've taken a few boxes. Uh, I'll probably this weekend. I'll finish shaking out the boxes that I've already broken down. The like boxes I've already broken down, I'll probably finish taking out this weekend or something. Um, incredible. Speaking of the World Cup, it's incredible that Morocco beat Spain because Spain is still a world-class team. Because remember when Spain was winning so many um, cups, being in so many finals? Can you imagine? Spain is a good team. Boxes I haven't yet broken down, we'll see. E 
Eagles. Meh. I remember when Spain won in 2010. Eagles are okay. One liter box is awful. Should be two. Yeah, if you have two cats, let's think two at I'm least. Sleepy. Uh, not so much sleepy as it is just... Right, Mary? Quarterfinals oh, tomorrow. I wonder who's going to win. Try this and dice dice. No. Portugal's a good team. So is Brazil. There's Argentina. And then there's England and France. That's going to be a nail biter. Now, people ask me about her too often. New Zealand have a cool kiwi bird. Kiwis are cool. People have asked me too often about Ice Spice, and now I'm uh, just going to say no. Morally opposed to listening to her. She <laughs> doesn't read us. Not right now. I don't like them. Patty the Batty. Just throw some pink sauce on Ketchup it. Chips. Nope. Throw some pink sauce. Just go ahead. Big Spinner a little. I never, I wasn't really, like, I never really spooned. Can I visit US? Not until I get, not until I get a passport. Yeah, I never really, I never really bothered, like, bothered to spoon. I sort of preferred to have my space in bed. Mm hmm. Yes, not like chips. Uh, I like salt and vinegar chips. That's about it. And tostitas. I like tostitas. All right, so some of you might be wondering, how come uh, Pete's used to visit the States back in the day, yet he didn't have a passport? Well, the thing is, you didn't need a passport until like the mid-2000s, because I even then I remember taking an ex. We went to Windsor because I was going to take her to Detroit. And then they were like, "Do you have, does she have a passport? And I was like, no, I was just trying to show her around. And we had to go into, you know, inside and do the whole fingerprint thing. And then they're like, okay, fine, because you're going to show around. We'll just let you do it. And then you guys come back over. But yeah, nowadays, there's no way. They're not going to let you over without a passport or an enhanced driver's license. So you got to get one or the other. Like old people food, carrot cake, meatloaf. With a spoon. Uh, Lenny, uh, when you're in bed, um, come on. Oh, I like cuddling, but I like, whenever I cuddle, it's face, like, whenever I used to cuddle with a girl, it would be face to face. Oh, okay. Little Nepotist says, is this a sad case where this guy is just kind of stuck in a crappy situation, or is it a case where his situation is completely his own fault? Somewhere in the middle, fill me in. <laughs> I would say a little bit of both, to be honest with you. Um, he has been a contributing factor to his situation in terms of he had the ability to go to school. He didn't do it. Of course, he was, he was, uh, he negotiated that he would get meals cooked and he'd be taken to work and he isn't getting meals cooked or taken to work and he hasn't enforced those rules on Foodie Beauty. Well, Foodie Beauty does give him fast food, which is, is what he likes. Like, there's just so much. He's, yeah, and he's lazy, of course. He has contributed a significant amount to his current position. You want, you want it to be a professional cuddler? There are people who are professional cuddlers out there. It's actually a job of some sorts. So there wasn't really, like, it wasn't spooning. It was, you know, just. Also, I should say. Another job that is in a high density city would be um, a professional uh, line holder. You know, people that stay in lines, like what they'll do is they'll stay in a line for you. So if you want a ticket to like a show, they'll be like, OK, well, pay me this much and I'll stay in the line for you. And then you could get that or with real estate. I've seen I heard this story about somebody getting like $60,000. So that a, a huge um, real estate tycoon would be at the front of the line because that tycoon was going to buy up most of the condos in a building. So the person negotiated with them that if you pay me $60,000, you can have my space, my spot in line so you can buy up all these condos. And to that person, 
60k was totally worth it because they were going to make millions. Weird stories. Yeah. But people make money in very odd ways. I find with being Big Spoon, they are right in my face. You wouldn't want to cuddle? Not a fan of hair right in my face. Pick up some foods and you normally wouldn't try and do a tape, live taste test. Uh, not very likely, Freedom Deep. It's not very likely. I tried that sushi a month and a half ago and that was enough for me. Baldy next time. Right, Ziggy? Try fr- fruits and vegetables I've never tried. Yeah, nah, pass. No, I'm not I'm not likely to be trying foods I've never tried. Am I gonna watch Avatar 2? Never watched the first one, so I don't think I'm gonna bother with the second one. Facts, Ziggy is he's not ugly, he's just like a hygiene and personality or major turnoffs. Exactly. They are. Don't give a shit. His attitude is bad. The hygiene is bad. I could swear that's the same shirt from yeah, somewhere you like and go live there. From Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Would I like to cuddle pandas? Of course. Ah. Why not? Do I have such a negative attitude about so many things? Just the way my brain works, Rebecca. It's just the way my brain works. Cinephile? No. No, I've there are like there's so few movies that I've seen. So many movies I've never watched. Like I really haven't watched all that many movies compared to what people seem to think, seem to uh, ask of me. Yeah. The Bible to you? Pass. His strengths lie in comic book knowledge. That's where Peace's strengths lie. Hey, Asa. All right, so. This stream's two and a half hours long now. Take you to an LGBT event, a local event. I don't know. Probably not anytime soon. Yeah. Two and a half hours, so I'm ready to uh, to call it a night. Facts on Sogbox. So, thanks for joining me. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Lernapati says this guy seems like he has been psychologically beaten into submission by something. Yeah. And uh Exactly. Good night, everybody. You're right as well. And I guess that is it. We're not gonna watch his validate series. But what I'm going to do is I got to do my daily activities that I always do. Thank you for joining me. It's been three hours. We're here for three hours doing this. Thank you so much, those who stuck around. I appreciate it. Smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And um, I'm out. So I'll be back later. So take care of yourselves. Have a good one. And I'll see ya. Bye-bye.